Hi guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. Today's video is a quick review on all about reading. I also want to share with you guys a few tips and tricks on how I use it, how I store it, and organize it. If you guys are interested in finding out how I use it, stay tuned. Okay, so before I get started, I do want to touch up on a little bit because I know I'm probably going to get a few questions about it. Um, I don't know if I will, but my eight-year-old is still on level one. Um, and the main reason why is because we did start it kind of late last year. We started it after Christmas break. And then even after that, we took a few breaks from it. Just my fault because when I was scheduling it into our homeschool day, that was one of the last things we would do because it was one of the things that we had to do one-on-one. -on -one. So the way that I was scheduling it in was after school. We were doing it pretty much after lunch. We would come back up here and sit down, just me and him, and work on it. Well, of course, that would never happen because by the time we had lunch and we would sit down on the couch and I would start doing other things, planning the day for tomorrow, for the next day, it would just get too late and then we would just never come back up and do the lessons. So that's part of the reason why we're still on level one when it comes to my second grader. Um, I do already have level two. We are going to start level two as soon as he's done with level one. Um, we also move kind of slow with it because if you guys are familiar with All About Reading, um, and this is going to be a little bit of a review so like that you guys can see it if you're not, there are these fluency sheets. Some fluency sheets, once you get further into level one, they become a little bit longer. So there's days where... He'll take two days to read the whole fluency sheet, and that's okay. He's, he's a little bit of a reluctant reader, so, it, you know, it's okay. Um, so that's another reason why I think it's taking us a little bit longer to finish it. Um, and I also wanted to add that my um, five-year-old, my kindergartner, um, now six years old, he just turned six, by the way, um, he just started it, so... It was something that I had purchased for him at the beginning of the year, but it wasn't something that I wanted him to start at the beginning of the year. This, this was something that I actually had scheduled into our, our planner to begin after Christmas break. So now it's after Christmas break and we started it fresh Monday. So, um, so far so good. We've only been on it for five days with him, so he's actually enjoying it quite a bit. So um, that makes me real happy. And that's the other reason why I wanted to do the review now because my eight-year-old is pretty far into it and my kindergartner has now started so I can give you guys a pretty good review as to how my boys are enjoying it how we're liking it um, I brought the boys work boxes um, to my desk so I can show you guys how I put it inside their work boxes and then all that it comes with and how I store it up. okay so here in front of you guys we see this is the all about reading one and this is the all about reading two all About Reading 1 comes with three readers. You also get your student packet that comes with all your um, word cards and letter cards or phonogram cards, and then you get your letter tiles. Everything's already been used, obviously, for um, Level 1. So this is pretty much what the letter tiles look like. And this is not the magnet board that I use for the letter tiles. The um, magnet board that I use is actually a lot larger than this. I just wanted to bring a few to show you guys. I'm going to try to insert a picture of the actual magnet board that we use. And it's one that I actually found at the Goodwill for like $2, but I know that it's a Ikea magnet board. Um, I know a lot of people that use this curriculum, they do use the big, the larger white magnet boards. Um, I just like the one that I have from Ikea because it's longer. It's a little, it's not as wide, but it's longer. So I'll go ahead and insert a picture of the one I have. So as you can see with the letter tiles, the vowels come in red and then the consonants come in blue. You also get um, other letter tiles like this one, for instance, the ones that I brought up or the consonant teams, but you also get like the vowel teams. Um, you get a bunch of different ones. Um, so yeah, all this you pretty much get with level one. As you go with the levels, they'll send you extra letter tiles if you need them for the lessons for... Um, for that level for instance for level two they supply these so these are the reading syllable tags so i am i haven't actually gotten into level two yet so i haven't seen the the preparation for it 
but I'm assuming that I'm going to have to add magnets to the back of these. Um, so that's what that came with. So like I said, I don't have the level one student packet because I already broke it all up, but I wanted to show you guys what it comes with. So normally it comes with the letter tiles, the student packet, and... Um, or the student pack, it comes with the letter tiles, and then it comes with these cards. Now, these cards, you're supposed to um, tear them up and separate them. So you have the phonogram cards, and then you have the word cards. This is pretty much what they would look like. So you have all your cards. Um, and I'll go more into this in a little bit. Okay, so the other thing, as you can see, level one comes with three readers. Level two only comes with two. With each set, you do get your teacher, your teacher guide. So here are the teacher guides for level one, level two, and then you get your activity pack. So your activity or your activity book, your activity book pretty much comes with every little activity um, printout that you're going to need for each lesson. The teacher guide is super detailed. Um, not only that, even these activity guides will tell you exactly what lesson you're going to need them for. Um, so it's, it's super detailed. I, I really love this curriculum. It's very detailed, very hands-on. So these are the activity books that you get. As far as the cards, um, all about reading, you can purchase a little cardboard box that they sell for like $10. Um, I didn't want to buy a $10 cardboard box. I figured, and it's pretty hefty. It, I know it's, uh, it looks pretty good quality from the pictures that I've seen, but these boxes are a dollar. You can pretty much buy them at Dollar Tree. I bought these at Home Depot, but they were a dollar also at Home Depot. Um, and I just put all my cards in here. I have my All About, um, these are all the All About Reading Level 1. I already have the container for Level 2. I just haven't cut those up. And then I do have All About Spelling, and these are for All About Spelling Level 1. I just, we're not using All About Spelling just yet. Um, I was going to start it with my son as soon as we start Level 2. I want to start Level 2 and All About Spelling together. I heard somewhere that that's usually how it should be. Um, I don't know where I read that, but I read it that um, All About Spelling should be started um, along with two. I don't know. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I just remember reading that somewhere in a blog. Um, so that was my plan from the get-go was to start all about spelling once we start level two. Um, I also, in this box, I also store the rest of my letter tiles and they're all separated in Ziploc bags. Um, so I have the, I guess these are the, um, bossy R ones and then you have the vowel team ones and then you have other consonant blend ones and then there's just some extra ones so all the letter tiles are separated in these little ziploc bags the other thing i do buy um i do have these little containers from the dollar tree and that's pretty much how i separate them per level um i'm gonna have to figure out a different way because i can't fit three of these in here so once i get into all about spelling i'm gonna have to figure out something different but for now this is working out fine um, so yeah, so these are the letter, the, the, the cards, the word cards and the phonogram cards that come with all about spelling. This is how I store them. Um, I do want to get a little bit more into this because when you are using all about spelling, it comes with these little dividers. So you have your word cards and then you have your phonogram cards and then it comes with other tabs and the other tabs read, um, like mastered cards and, um, cards to review and I don't um do that and I'll show you guys why in a minute um I separate them in a different container the ones that we're working on it just makes it easier for me and whatever cards that because I do have two students on all about reading so this would just be filled up with a bunch of tabs so I just have a separate um container I have one of these and um, in here, there's two tabs per student. So I have uh, my five-year-old, or my now six-year-old, sorry. He has two areas. He has the one, the lesson that we're on and the lesson that we need to review. And then um, my eldest son, he has his cards. He doesn't have any for review right now, but he does have the ones for the lesson. So this is how I keep them. Um, so like that, when we go sit down and work on this, um, I'll show you guys again where I keep all this, but, um, I just have to carry this with me and not this. Um, so that's how I do it. So another thing I want to um, point out is 
as far as the teacher's guide, the teacher guides are super detailed. Um, for every lesson, they're going to give you pretty much something for you to read um, before you start the lesson. Um, little pointers, little tips. It'll also give you a little list of things that you're going to need for that um, said lesson. So you're going to have, um, is going to tell you what phonogram cards to pull out, what word cards, and what pages in your activity book. So it's super detailed. Um, it pretty much, it's not completely scripted, but it does tell you what to ask, what to say. Um, like I said, little um, special tips for you as a teacher. And um, yeah, so it's super, um, super detailed. Let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and jump into how I store them inside their um, work boxes. Okay, so as far as work boxes, this here is my um, eight-year-old's work box and is just labeled reading. And then my six-year-old's work box, it's labeled reading as well, but I also added a little tab that shows him the curriculum. So like that, whenever it's time for him to put it away, he knows exactly where it goes. Because sometimes he does have trouble finding the right box, work box. So he, I sometimes can't find his curriculum because he'll stick it in the wrong box. So I ended up doing that. So it actually helps. Um, so the way that I, what I keep in their work box for this curriculum is the reader that they're on, their activity notebook, or their activity, I'm sorry, their activity workbook, and I created for them a activity notebook. Now the notebook, all it is, is their activity book pages glued in here. So I created almost like a little mini um, interactive kind of notebook for them, just to keep the pages in case we need to go back for lessons or anything like that, everything's here. This is also a, a tip for some of the homeschool moms that have to actually meet with like a school board or have to meet with, um, I don't know. Um, I, I know in Texas, we don't have to meet with anybody. We don't have to report to anyone when it comes to homeschooling. Um, I don't even necessarily have to save active or nope, um, save worksheets or anything like that. Um, this was mainly for them because, um, they do enjoy the activities quite a bit. Um, so this is just an easy, simple way to save the activities. If he ever wants to go back and redo, uh, one of the games or whatever it is, he can, everything is in here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys, um, how I set those up. Just because, like I said, if you're, if you live in a state where you have to meet with someone, this would be a great way to add this inside your, your notebooks that you guys have to take with you. You guys can just create something like this and this can be your reading notebook to show that you're actually doing reading. So anyways, let me go ahead and show you guys. So again, they have their reader in here. They have their little activity notebook. And all I really did was I photocopied this cover and taped it on top. Um, or I stapled it. So the type of notebook that I use is a, um, and I can't remember the brand. Yeah, I can't remember the brand. But it's, um, the cover is like a heart of vinyl. And um, the inside has a little folder. And it's just one pocket folder, and it has one pocket on the front and one pocket on the back. The one in the back, that's where I keep their progress chart and their stickers. The stickers are, er, there are the stickers. And in the front pocket is where I keep the lesson that we're going to be doing um, that day. So ahead of time, I go ahead and tear off the pages from their activity book, and I just place them in here for them. Um, there are days where, this is what I'm going to explain what the envelope is for certain activities like for instance even this one calls for cutting out um, smaller pieces um, there's times where if I have time the night before I'll cut it out myself um, just because sometimes if I have the my child cut out the activity it just takes way too long and it makes the lesson just that much longer so there's times where I cut it out myself and then I just place them in here um, and then I just stick it in here like that. Everything's already cut out for him. So the next day he can just grab his folder and then all, everything's already cut out for him. So it just goes by quicker. Um, so as you can see, I didn't have time to cut the word flippers for this lesson for today. I didn't have time to cut him out. Um, but it's okay. Um, I, I usually sit down and help him anyway. So that's that. But, um, real quick. So these are some that I haven't stapled in. But pretty much from lesson one, you have all the activities in here and they're all glued in. Um, so like I said, we could always go back and look at the lessons that we've done. He can reread some of the little activities that he's done. 
when it comes to the warm-up sheets and the, the practice sheets, which are like the little reader, um, fluency reader sheets that this curriculum comes with, those I staple. And I'll staple, here I only stapled one, but normally I staple a few. Um, see, like here I have two of them per page. So like that, I'm not wasting so many pages. Some of the activities where it's games, I'll glue, I'll glue them in a way where he can um, redo it. Like for instance, this one I just added a post-it on the back. So it creates a little pocket. And then if he wants to ever feed his little monster again, he can. Um, and everything is in here for him to... Um, Allow him to just kind of redo the activity if he feels like he wants to redo it. So, um, so that's how, that's why I called it his little interactive notebook. So it's more, more like a little interactive notebook. Um, so most of the pages are glued down though. Um, it's just, if it's an actual game itself, then I'll glue it more like, um, like for instance, this one was a matching game. So I just glued an envelope in here. So all the cards, the card pieces are um, left separated. So he, if he ever wants to play it again, he definitely can. So that's how I handle um, the games. But yeah, so that's how I do it. Word flippers, same thing. I um, After we're done using them, um, I just glue the back piece on. So then all the word flippers are glued in here as well. So that's how we do it. That's how um, I set up All About Reading when it comes to the activity notebook. Um, so it's super fun. Uh, my son has already actually done this one. This was a, one of the most recent activities that he's done. And he's already done it a few times. He actually had fun with this. So, um, so yeah, so that's how we set it up. And again, my six-year-old just started it. So he's, um, I set up his exactly the same way. There's his progress chart with the stickers. And I lost his stickers for some reason. I don't know where I placed them. So I just got little happy face stickers so you can keep track of it. Um, so yeah, again, I just need to staple these in here. But yeah, so that's how we've, we've set it up. Um, so that's that. Um, and again, and for level two, we're going to be starting that soon with my eight-year-old. So I already have his little um, activity notebook set up. So again, it's just that vinyl, hard vinyl with the folder. And... Most of these folders, I will say that I've gotten um, for like the after school or the back to school sales that they have at Walmart. I've gotten them for pretty cheap. I think I got these for like 87 cents, I think. Um, so I had bought a few because I really do like this for that. So yeah, so this is, it was pretty much just like a three ring binder um, notebook. Okay, so how we work from this. When... Because this is a curriculum that you do have to work. If you do have multiple children, it is something that you have to work with individually. The way that we do it is we take turns. So normally my youngest will go first. Um, and the way that we do it is I set up for them a pencil box. And this pencil box is sitting under my sharpener. So when it comes to doing all about reading, my because my six-year-old goes first, he knows to go ahead and grab his book, his activity notebook, only because normally I would already have the pages that we're going to be working on in here. So I have him grab his activity notebook, his book, and then he knows to go um, by the sharpener to grab this. And what I keep inside this pencil box, and this is also because we don't work um, on this on our desk. This is something that we take to the my little um, craft table, the big black um, craft table. That's where we go to work on this like that. We can be away from my two other kids and we can be in more of a quieter corner. Um, and that's also where I have my big magnet board with the letter tiles. Um, so this is pretty much what he'll grab and he'll come and sit with me at the black table. And inside this pencil box, I have the little um, recipe notebook thing with the cards. So that's in here. I also keep a stapler because for some of the lessons, I do staple them into the activity book. And then for the word, word flippers, you do need a um, stapler to staple the word flippers together. I keep a pencil. I keep a little pair of scissors. I keep a little colorful pen. Um, I allow them to color their pages only if they want. But I have them, if they do want to color their pages, I have them go back to their desk and just kind of do it after. 
Um, this is just for fun in case they need to write anything if they want to use this instead of the pencil. Um, some a little thing of uh, post-its and two glue sticks. So this is what I keep inside the little pencil box. And like I said, this is what they carry with them to sit with me to do all about reading. Um, so it's, everything's just kind of kept together and it just makes it a lot easier. And they now each have independent work to work on while they wait for the lesson to be over. But now since we've been doing it this way, um, it doesn't take us as long to finish the lessons because everything's pretty much already there for us. Um, so yeah, so it runs a lot smoother and it's a lot easier for us to get the lesson done um, pretty quickly. Um, not only that. One of the other things that I started doing is because um, there was times where I would sit with them for a few minutes and have them read their practice sheets. What I have them do now um, is if they have like my eldest, his his word or practice sheets tend to be pretty long. So what I have him do now um, or have them do now is I have a little corner where I set up a little chair. It's one of those little bucket seats. And they can sit there or they can sit in the preschool area where I have the big pencil pillow from um, Ikea. They can sit in either corner and sit down and quietly read this on their own. I feel like I was wasting a lot more time because before I was having, I would sit with them after our lesson and we would go through this and it would take so long. So now because I just kind of have them independently read it on their own, um, it just goes by faster because while my oldest is sitting down reading this quietly, I can, you know, be doing language arts with my six-year-old or including another lesson in there. So we're not wasting um, time, at least with the one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, so yeah, so that's working out actually great and they actually enjoy their little alone time for reading. Um, so that's how we're handling this right now and it's working out great. So that's how I have all that set up. So now I want to tap into the, the little readers real quick. The little readers are super cute little books. I wanted to show you guys just a few little, uh, a little bit into inside of the stories. The pictures are very, um, they're not colorful, but we love them. I love uh, the simplicity in the drawings. They're so cute. The readers are super easy to read. The stories are adorable. Um, and I find that my kids actually enjoy the stories quite a bit. As simple as they are, my boys enjoy them a lot. Um, so they're really cute. Um, this is the, the first book. So this one's actually pretty simple. The stories are very short and sweet. And, um, yeah, we're actually enjoying this curriculum quite a bit. So that is that. And... I think that's it guys. I think that's all I had for you guys today. If you guys have any questions or anything, please feel free and let me know. And I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.